Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a family portrait ranked video of one of the most controversial houses uh, that I've ever come across ever. And uh, the reason is that I have a love-hate relationship with them. Sometimes I absolutely love what they do. They have bottles that are in my top 10 fragrances of all time. Other times they seem to stand for everything I despise in modern perfume. Um, especially with the extremely high price tag, uh, very elitist, very, um, you know, may, it seems like they're kind of made for gentlemen and ladies that like to flex, you know, they like to show off their wealth. Um, and I'm not about that. I'm about the juice inside. And, you know, um, it's a house that really divides the fragrance community right down the middle. There are some people who, again, absolutely love them and some people who despise them, some people that uh, won't even sniff them because uh, they don't want to fall in love and have to spend all this money. And, you know, there are people who smell it. And, you know, if you read Luca Turin, if you trust Luca Turin as the nose, it's funny because whenever you read his uh, reviews on a Roja Dove fragrance, it is um, always one line short and it'll say something like, normal vetiver or average, you know, average tobacco or, you know, he, he always, uh, if you've ever heard Roja talk, Roja always says that his point in making a fragrance is to, you know, get a rise out of someone, have them uh, have a, an emotional reaction. And Luca Turin does exactly the opposite. He basically says Roja's fragrances are all boring. And I disagree with that. Uh, but I, I do agree that you know, you could have a debate on is Roja a clone house, and I actually talked a little bit about this yesterday when I re when I reviewed Roja's 51 Pour Homme, which is discontinued. This is the Eau de Parfum. It will be on this list, uh, and this list is basically going to comprise a top 35 Roja countdown in my collection. Some are full bottles, some are uh, small samples, some are discovery atomizers that are seven and a half mils. Uh, but I'm not discriminating based on whether I have a bunch of juice or a little juice or these are my top favorite Rojas. You know, even some of the, you know, just samples or whatever made my top 10 here. So it's not all the full bottles that I have made my top 10. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy this. I did one of these videos on Emoage recently and it was very well received. I'm going to do them on the houses that I have a lot of bottles, like for example, Guerlain. I'm going to rank uh, my Chanel family portrait. I'm going to rank Bortnikoff, you know, stuff like that. So I'm going to rank these. I think people kind of find them helpful. And it's a fun video to do. It's a way to kind of talk about a lot of fragrances in a, in a short amount of time. And, um, you know, I hope you guys appreciate this. But before we get into this, we're going to do scent of the day. And today I have a double header video because tonight... Uh, I'm actually going to do a quick hit or late night insight video on a Naomi Good Sir fragrance. I've never done a, a video on this house before. And the fragrance that I'm wearing as my scent of the day is called Corpus Equus. So thank you to Jonathan1970 for sending this to me. Thank you. I've, I've had this for a while. I've worn it to bed uh, pro once before. And I'm wearing it today as my scent of the day for the very first time. And... You know, I'm really enjoying it. It's a uh, Bertrand du Chafour, and it's got this, um, you know, smoked smoked uh, barbecue like accord. Um, there was a uh, fragrance that it really reminds me of that I'll talk about. I'm going to do a quick hit video tonight on this, just because I want to have a video about. It. I want to share my thoughts about it. Uh, it's a very good perfume. It's probably full bottle worthy. But I don't know if I'm going to get a bottle because I think I'm going to get one fragrance that kind of reminds me of this, but it has oud in it. This one doesn't have oud. It's more about the leather and the smoked woods, but uh, it's a Bertrand du Chafour. So if you own this fragrance, I mean, you cannot go wrong. This is a great fragrance, especially for a modern leather. Many of my leathers are from the, you know, 60s, 70s. Even one of the leathers I reviewed yesterday that I absolutely loved was from 1901. So... Many of my favorite leathers are old school leathers, and this is a great example of a modern leather done very well. So uh, Corpus Equus is my scent of the day, really enjoying it. Okay, so let's get into this. Let's start with the bonus uh, two fragrances. And so basically at number 37, or bonus fragrance number one, if you will, my most hated Roja 
And in fact, I couldn't put this any lower on the list. It's in this little discovery sample set that uh, DL Qualia very kindly sent to me. And I actually have a full review or an early impression. I basically wore this as my scent of the day one day and talked about it, but it's called A Midsummer Dream. I absolutely despise this fragrance. I think it's so cheap smelling. It has this white musk, this boring, it's so boring. Um, it's a boring white musk. Uh, they say that there's spices and vanilla and iris and, you know, it's floral, but to me it's just this fresh, boring, white musk fragrance with maybe a touch of amber. I don't know. It was, uh, not impressive at all. Go watch my take on it, my video that I, that I did on it. Um, A Midsummer's Dream is the worst Roja for me. Okay, next on the list we have two... Feminine Target fragrances, and I'm going to do reviews on these one day, or I plan to, I should say. Uh, one of them I got as a gift from one of my friends when I purchased uh, Straight to Heaven Extreme by Killian. And he sent me this for free, this 5ml decant, and it's called uh, Enigma by uh, Roja Parfums from 2013. And this is the Porfem version, okay? So this is the uh, feminine version of Enigma. And it's nothing like the masculine version. The masculine version is about the tobacco, the cognac. This is completely different. This is like this powdery floral, this um, vintage style powdery floral. And I'm not really sure um, if there was a fragrance from back in the day that Roja based this on. Many of his fragrances have, you know, vintage um, I don't want to say clones, but they're inspired by fragrances of the past. I can't put my finger on exactly what this is inspired by. Um, but it's got this, uh, bergamot, geranium, heliotrope, jasmine from grass, neroli. There is a beautiful peach note with may rose, ylang ylang. There is supposedly real ambergris in the base, iris, musk, patchouli, sandalwood, and vanilla. And it is a little sweet. It is floral. It is powdery. But it beat out a Midsummer Dream, I'll tell you that. Uh, I would I would rather wear this. And this is super traditionally feminine. If you're someone that, you know, has a problem wearing, if you're a guy and you, and you will wear feminine fragrances, but not the real traditional feminine ones, you may have a hard time with this one because this is very traditionally feminine. And yet, I really enjoy it. Um, I, I wore it one day as my... Uh, scent of the night fragrance before bed and I let my wife smell it and she was like no that smells like a grandma and I and I said no it doesn't it absolutely does not uh, but I think it's just the connotation of powdery florals but I think it is um, I think it's well done um, but it's not one of my favorite styles to wear so that's why it's towards the bottom at number 36 okay number 35 is going to be uh, a so there's an Aude version of Enigma, and let's see if I can find it here. The Aude version of Enigma is in one of these little sample sets. So I got a couple of them here. Uh, yes, here it is. No, there it is not. Where is the Aude version of Enigma? Ah, here it is. Okay, so it's called Enigma Aude Parfum. And there you go right there, Enigma Aude Parfum. So this makes number 35. This is technically the bottom on the list if you want to put the first two as uh, bonus fragrances. And um, Enigma Aude Parfum came out in 2018. So it came out many years after the regular Enigma for women. And they marketed this as unisex, but it seems to be based on that uh, Enigma uh, for women DNA a little bit. It has that uh, aldehydic floral. It has that patented Roja Dove floral that he loves to use across many of his fragrances. So you get aldehydes, which you don't get aldehydes in the regular Enigma for women. Um, aldehydes, bergamot, geranium, may rose, jasmine from grass, ylang ylang, peach. And then you get a very similar base. So it's patchouli, Sandalwood, benzoin, vanilla, iris, labdanum, musk. If it sounds very similar to the regular Enigma, it is. Uh, and they've added oud. But that addition of oud, uh, or oud, whatever they're using, in quotation marks, 
I've never heard Roja claim he uses real oud, which probably means he doesn't, but I don't know. If the brand says they use real oud, they use real oud. Take, take what they say as fact. They wouldn't say they do if they don't. Uh, but that doesn't mean they don't use 0.001% real oud and everything else is synthetic and they can say, hey, guess what? We use real oud. Um, so my point in saying all this is that this beats out the regular Enigma by one slot because of that additional oud note, which I do like. I've noticed normally brands nowadays, and I don't know if Roja does this or not, but I've noticed they use like a mixture of a couple different ingredients like uh, Cipriol and some other things that most people maybe don't know what they smell like and so they smell it and they're like oh maybe this is oud when it isn't uh, but it's not a bad perfume again I like it I'll do a review on this I'll talk about it but it's super overpriced in my opinion so number 35 is Enigma Aoud Parfum number 34 uh, is a sit is a uh, aquatic fragrance and, you know, the reason it's here, even though this is an interesting aquatic, Roja uses a floral note in some of his cleaner fragrances called Litsea Kubiba. And Litsea Kubiba is used in this fragrance. This is called Ocean Oceania Eau de Parfum. And um, basically, to me, I could wear this or I could wear Creed's Aralfa and it doesn't matter to me. You know, I have no preference between the two. Um, yes, they are a little bit different, uh, but for fresher summer fragrances, I have so many of those Creed's, um, you know, even something like Royal Water, which is completely different from this, but it still falls into that uh, fresh, heavy juniper berry. You know, it just, I I really don't care. And, and honestly... There are some uh, aquatics that I own. Like, I'll just give you a quick example. Uh, I could easily wear something like this. This is Jean Petou's Voyager by one of the greatest perfumers of all time, real perfumers, Jean Carlio. And um, Jean Carlio created this. This has real Mysore sandalwood in it. And so for an aquatic, you get a little bit of an aquatic for like 10 minutes and then it dives into like this classic French perfumery. But for a summer fragrance, forget about it. I'd rather just wear this. So that's the reason why Oceania is here. Yes, it's very nice. It's very pleasant. Uh, that Litsea Kubiba note that Roja uses really extends the citruses or it gives the feel of extending the citruses because Litsea Kubiba is actually a flower. It's not a citrus note. But there's lemon, bergamot, grapefruit, lime, mandarin orange, and then you get this provincial lavender. Um, it's very smooth. It's very creamy. Uh, it's got that citrusy, fresh, oceanic vibe. Uh, there's supposedly, um, there is that Roja heart that I've talked about that he tends to, you know, I think they created this floral heart accord and they kind of move it around like a chess piece across their fragrance line. So you get the geranium, jasmine from grass, lang lang, violet, jasmine sambac. I mean, you know, you're going to see similar floral hearts over and over and over. Here they added the jasmine sambac, which is a note that he normally doesn't add in his floral heart. It's usually the may rose, jasmine from grass, you know, violet. He loves violet. Roja loves violet. If you've ever seen him, if you've ever seen him in those pictures where he's decked out in his you know, $1,200 Louboutin slippers without any socks and a purple smoking jacket and, you know, um, and he's surrounded by all these high class art artifacts and all this stuff. And, you know, if, if you've ever um, seen him in, 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 uh, at his house giving an interview or at one of his places, he's always wearing like a purple, uh, purple is kind of his color and violet is, is that purple color. And so he's always wearing like a purple jacket or he's got purple pillows or, you know, and he, and he tells the story about why. Um, if you ever watch any of his interviews, he's a, um, uh, he is a lovely man. I, I love the fact that he's a fragrance lover. I don't like the fact that he is extremely, um, he's almost like he's a politician. You listen to him talk, like if you've heard Roja talk once, you've heard him talk 10 times because everything he says, 
he repeats the same thing over and over and over and over. He obviously has these talking points that he knows works and he doesn't want to deviate from that. So you hear him talk and he's like, oh, when I was just a little kid, my mother came in and gave me a kiss on the cheek and it was that kiss that sparked this love of perfume. And, and you know, and it's a fantastic story, uh, but I just want to, I want to see the real Roja come out and talk more. You know, I don't want to see the politician Roja that comes out and, you know, gives his, uh, you know, his talking points and leaves. You know what I mean? But I bring that up because uh, violet's his favorite color and you'll see him in violet over and over and over. And, and um, uh, he uses violet in many of his perfumes. And there is a violet note in here. Uh, interestingly enough, it dries down to this galbanum oak moss, and I think it's that green galbanum oak moss that kind of reminds me a little bit of Arolfa, because Arolfa has like this pine-like green vibe with the oceanic, with the marine notes in Arolfa. And I think that was a Pierre Bourdon, one of the greatest perfumers of all time. So anytime you're comparing anything to a um, Pierre Bourdon creation, you know it's good. It's just not my favorite style. That's why it's here, the citrusy, fresh, with this creamy vanilla irisy dry down thing is, I mean, it's nice. This marine freshness, not my favorite to wear though, but I will do a, a video. I'll do a video on all these one day, uh, the ones I haven't done. Okay, so Oceania falls at number 34. 33 is another fresh one, but I think I prefer this one to Oceania. To Oceania. It's uh, Burlington 1819. Okay, so Burlington 1819 is also a citrusy, fresh fragrance. This time you get a little bit of this minty freshness to go with like the grapefruit, the, the lime. The reason I like this a little bit more is it doesn't go so much aquatic. It goes more into just a little bit of a heftier dry down. So it still has this creamy vanilla cashmere like undertone, uh, but they've added things like saffron, patchouli, rum, tobacco, cumin, uh, which interestingly enough, I mentioned Royal Water. Royal Water is a creed that actually has cumin. Uh, there's cumin that mixes with the fresh. It's this contrast of kind of dirty and clean. Contrast is very important in perfumery. In fact, to me, maybe one of the most important uh, features in a perfume is contrast. Uh, and I think that's what so many modern perfumes are missing nowadays because, you know, they all kind of have this blurb and they all use the same, uh, you know, captive molecules and ingredients and oils from the big oil houses and they all start smelling the same and boring. I miss the days where there was that Koros contrast of, you know, dirty and clean or, you know, with uh, even something like um, Royal Water, you get that cumin, which gives it a little bit of dirtiness with that freshness. And so that kind of contrast is missing. It's here. Uh, and I, I don't think I would pay what Roja is asking for Burlington 1819. It came out in 2020. Um, but I do like it. I just, uh, I'll review it. I'll talk about it, but you won't see a bottle on my shelf. And that's why it is uh, right here at number um, 33. Okay, number 32. Number 32 is a gourmand, and I am not a gourmand lover. In fact, normally sweet fragrances for me are a no-no. Uh, and so this fragrance is called Sweetie Oud Parfum. And so again, same thing. I haven't done a video on this yet, but I will. Uh, Sweetie Oud Parfum uh, is a sweet gourmand that basically smells like, you know, a little bit like you're smelling Tonka Imperial by Guerlain and a little bit like you're smelling this fresh made pastry. You know what I mean? So if you know Tonka Imperial, there is this, um, there is this almondy, you know, there is a pastry vibe to Tonka Imperial too, but there's also tobacco and a couple other things in, in Tonka Imperial that you don't find here in Sweetie Oud. And Sweetie Oud came out in 2015. Um, there is this note of Amiris, which I've noticed he's used in a couple fragrances. One of the top tens that I'm going to show you uses the note of Amiris. Appar apparently, Amiris 
uh, is a note that is a plant that comes from uh, the citrus fa family, and some species of Amiris actually exude Elemi resin, strangely enough. Um, but smelling Amiris and smelling Elemi have two very different smells. And so here, it dries down to this Cypriol, um, cumin, frankincense, you know, Middle Eastern base, if you will, with oud and labdanum. But the sweet notes are really amped up, that pastry-like sweetness. And it's that sweetness that bothers me. I think this is a nice smell. Do I want to smell like this, though, is what I have to ask myself. For a man who loves wearing Bellamy and Boss Number no. 1 and Koros and Antaeus and Leonard Porom, do I want to smell like Sweetie Oud Parfum? And the answer to that is usually no. Uh, and so while I appreciate the fact that I get to smell it uh, and have smelled it, and I'll do a full video on it one day, uh, is it a fragrance I want in my wardrobe that I want to wear? No, I don't think so. Um, but if you are into gourmands, like I think Sebastian from the Perfume Guy put that as one of his favorite roses because he loves gourmands. And that's where you have to be very careful when you're trusting a reviewer's nose because inherently their biases are going to come into these top 10, top 20, top 35 lists, right? It's my list, right? Or if Sebastian does it, it's his list. If AC from Smells Good does it, it's his list. So you really have to know who you're watching and what their tastes and preferences are. Because what I put as number one, maybe your number 35. It may be Sebastian's number 20. It may be AC's number 15, you know? And so it's a very important topic to, to talk about because I have purchased fragrances blind off of people like Joy Amin, and Joy's tastes are very close to Sebastian's. They both really like sweet fragrances, and I hate sweet. And so I've purchased stuff blind off of their recommendation that they've hyped, and then I get, and then it comes and I smell it, and I'm like, oh, what have I done? This is absolutely trash, you know? I think CK Reveal for Men was that fragrance for me with Joy Amin. So I just bring that up because this list is, um, it's my personal preference, but uh, keep in mind, for someone like me that doesn't like sweet, if you compare it to someone like Sebastian from The Perfume Guy, he may put a fragrance like Sweetie Oud, which in my list is number 32, very close to the top. So just be careful with that. Okay, number 31. Uh, 31, you might be surprised that it's here, but you know what? It can't be anywhere else but here because... Uh, I'm even surprised it's this high. 31 is Elysium. Now, Elysium is the pleasant blue fragrance in Roja's lineup. I have both the, um, I think this is the Eau de Parfum or the Parfum Cologne. I can't remember, but I do have the X-Ray right here. So this is Elysium X-Ray. Uh, and, you know... It's basically, and I'll do a full video on this, I don't know what else I'm going to say about it other than what I'm about to say, but Elysium is basically uh, Blue de Chanel meets Aventus. That's it. I mean, it's uh, Roja's Blue de Chanel meets Aventus. It has the black currant and apple of Aventus. It has the grapefruit. Uh, it has the grapefruit of Blue de Chanel. And it's that blue fragrance vibe. Does it smell maybe just a little bit higher class than um, Blue de Chanel? Yes, it does. Is it worth $500 for 50 mil in the X-Ray or 300 or, or 280 or whatever it is for the Parfum Cologne? Absolutely not. But uh, we'll leave that story for another day. So Elysium comes in at number 31. Number 30 is going to be from the Middle Eastern line, and this is going to be United Arab Emirates. Number 30 is United Arab Emirates. And so United Arab Emirates, Oud Parfum, or Aoud Parfum, whatever you want to call it, uh, is a oriental floral fragrance. And he basically created this line. Uh, there's different... Uh, if you've never seen this line or heard of the line, they're supposed to celebrate the different Middle Eastern countries. So there's United Arab Emirates, there's Saudi Arabia, there's Kuwait, there's all this stuff. You're going to see a couple of them in my 
uh, Roja countdown here. And United Arab Emirates, I will do a full review on. There is a beautiful contrast of green artemisia with spicy clove and pink pepper and oud with uh, that cypriol cumin that I really like, you know, that frankincense thing as it dries. Uh, and I like this style. It's a little bit, it's a lot of bit overdone, let's say. Now that we're in 2022, this is 2014 this came out. This came out eight years ago. Uh, it was probably much newer and, you know, um, unique back then. But I do still enjoy it, I have to admit. Even though it does feel a little bit tired in 2022, I still enjoy this style. And so that's the reason why it is coming in at number 30. Okay, number 29. So number 29 is actually a uh, fragrance that I did a review on my channel already. And if you're new to my channel, you haven't been following me, and you stumble across this video and you want to learn more, I have an entire Roja playlist. You can go see the fragrances I've done full reviews on. There's a couple of them that I've done some full reviews, early impressions, I've given my thoughts. But one of them is called Herod's Porom. Obviously, it's a Herod's exclusive. And... The thing about these uh, exclusives, and as you can see, I basically drain that dry, and yet I can still smell it uh, very clearly. Uh, and Herod's Pour Homme at number 29, the reason it's here, the reason it beats something like United Arab Emirates, is that this would be a fantastic work scent. And I think I said that in the review, because it has this... Um, this very professionalism about it. You know, I could totally see an executive... 50 years old, going into Harrods, not into perfume. He just sniffs this and goes, wow, this is posh. It's high class. Give me a bottle for $580 or whatever whatever it is. I have no clue what it is. Uh, but it feels like it's a fougere construction. It's got the lavender, geranium, kumarin. Uh, but there's a couple other things going on. Uh, and he does the same trick here that he does with Oceania uh, without the aquatic vibe. So there's lots of citruses in the opening. It's very sprightly, very energetic, uh, almost very youthful opening, and yet it dries into something very professional and um, very solid. You know, it's it's like uh, it's 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 like you're smelling a very well grounded man, somebody who knows who he is. You know, it gives that vibe really. And um, it opens up with lemon, bergamot, lime, orange, bitter orange, and then that, let's say, a Kubiba is kind of the bridge because it takes the citruses and it bridges it with the floral heart. Uh, and, and it really makes it feel like the citruses just last and last and last and last. And that's kind of a trick that Roja does on some of these fragrances where you want it to be, um, you know, fresh and invigorating, but you... You don't want the citrus opening to last five minutes and be gone. You know what I mean? Let's say a Kubiba seems to extend that citruses. And then there's old school thyme, excuse me, with that floral heart, geranium, may rose, neroli, jasmine from grass, ylang, and violet. You're going to see violet a lot. Uh, and then there's galbanum, patchouli, oak moss, vetiver, juniper, cashmere woods, which is cashmeran. Uh, I did a video on synthetics. You can go check out vanilla, iris, labdanum, amber roam, absolute which I think is supposed to uh, have this labdanum-like feel. There's also labdanum here. Roja also loves labdanum, uh, and so do I. If I was creating my own fragrance line, labdanum would be at the center of it because I think it's one of uh, the most beautiful notes, even on its own. You know, you could just smell labdanum, and it's just stunning on its own. Uh, and musk. And um, it is a very professional... You know, um, it's just so, I, I really doubt you're going to smell uh, very few people who would smell like this. Or if you ran into somebody who smelled like this, you would meet very few people who would not like this smell. It's so uh, likable. And uh, while that's not the reason why I buy perfume to be likable, uh, I buy it because I want art in a bottle. I want to experience something amazing, you know. Uh, I want to experience stuff I've never smelled before. I want to experience notes in places I've never smelled them before. Uh, designs of perfumes that are revolutionary. If you're the guy that just wants to smell 
posh and expensive and you wear one fragrance a year all year and you're like an executive Harrods Pour Homme is is would fit that bill it's just expensive and it's uh came out in 2019 so the next one is basically the same kind of idea but it came out in 2014 it's called Goodman's Pour Homme and this one I don't think I've done a video on yet but I will um so Goodman's Pour Homme does not have that let's say a Kubiba note in it but it does have a note that shows up in the next two fragrances. So it's a trick Roja started to do uh, in, you're going to see, um, 2014 he used it and then he used it again in 2018. And so the trick is this Mayflower note. Very unique note. You don't see many fragrances containing the note of Mayflower. Uh, it also has that same floral, heart, May Rose, Jasmine from Grass, Ylang Ylang, Neroli. And this is a fragrance that, you know, falls into a category uh, that is probably very similar as far as um, the way that it makes people feel. Very posh. If someone walked into uh, uh, Bergdorf Goodman, Goodman's Pour Homme is what it's called, and smelled this and they knew nothing about fragrance, they would probably say that, wow, that's a very pleasant fragrance. But the reason that I like it a little bit more than Herod's Pour Homme is Herod's Pour Homme, I think, falls maybe a little bit more into the Fougere category, whereas Goodman's is more of a chiffre. And I like chiffres a little bit more uh, because they tend to have this mysteriousness about them. And it dries to something cinnamony, spicy, patchouli, a little bit of frankincense, a little bit of vetiver. And it just... Um, you know, it adds that that cinnamon and cardamom adds a little bit of this warm spiciness that I that I like a little bit more. So very posh. Both of them are very posh. You couldn't go wrong either way if you just wanted like a pleasant smelling rosia. But Goodman's Pour Homme comes in at number where are we? Uh, number twenty eight. Okay, number twenty seven is a fragrance that I have a full review or an early impression, I should say, on the channel. It's called La Oscar Pour Homme. So this was made for Hotel La Oscar and in England. And I really like this fragrance. I think this is, um, of all the, the just general, posh, you know, department store, car brands, hotel brands that Roja did fragrances for, this is probably one of my favorite. Uh, and the reason is is that there is that very interesting note of Mayflower, again, with old school carnation. And it's that vintage spicy green carnation mixed with uh, resinous labdanum, that contrast of florals, Mayflower, carnation with that resinous cystus labdanum that I just absolutely love. Um, and there's some interesting notes in here. There's things like celery seeds, uh, there's green galbanum, but it's a proper chiffre. It's another spicy chiffre, and those are chiffre is one of my favorite categories, uh, and I think this is very good. Not many people know about this. It is expensive. I think it is still available for purchase, but you have to buy it uh, either directly from the Roja website or from uh, La Oscar, the hotel. Okay, so let's move on. That's number. La Oscar came in at 27. Number 26, and um, this might shock some people. I did a full review on this one on the channel. You can go check it out. It is discontinued, unfortunately. Uh, so number 26 comes in, um, and it's going to be, it's going to be a fragrance called Oh, the Exclusive Parfum. All right, so you can go check this out if you if you go go to my channel. You can find the full review if you want after this. But uh, oh, the exclusive parfum is a 2016 release, and this is the one that I was joking and basically said I think that um, Julian Raskinet probably made this because it smells very similar to the Moon. If you've ever smelled the Moon by Frederick Mall, which came out three years after this. So when I first smelled this, I smelled it blind. I didn't look at any of the notes. I didn't look at the year it came out. I said, oh man, it smells like Roja copied Frederick Mall's The Moon here. Because I'm so used to Roja being the one to copy other brands or at least take in, take, you know, um, 
take notes off of other brands' fragrances and, you know, make something similar. And here it was actually the other way around. This one came out first in 2016, and it has that raspberry with a big saffron, cipriol, that, you know, birchy, oody, dry down with labdanum, that Middle Eastern dry down, you know. Um, but there's something about this that just doesn't come together as well as the moon. The moon to me, um, the moon to me does what it does better. And so since I have a full bottle of the moon, this will not be a full bottle purchase. I can appreciate it. I'm glad I got a chance to sniff it. I'm shocked it came out a couple years before the moon, but, um, if you like the moon, you'll probably like this. If you like this, you'll probably like the moon. I just prefer the moon a little bit more. So it has a little bit of a downfall because of competition. And actually, uh, the same thing is true of the next one, which is number 25. So this is a discontinued fragrance. Well, a discontinued concentration. I think the Parfum version, you can still buy from the website, 50 mils, 500 bucks, 500 USD. Um, this is the older Eau de Parfum. Uh, well, actually, in this case, they both came out in 2014. So this is Reckless Pour Homme. Reckless Pour Homme Eau de Parfum. So Reckless Pour Homme um, reminds me very close. This fragrance has a problem to me. And it's the same problem, basically, that Oh the Exclusive Parfum. I did a full video on Reckless Pour Homme, if you want to check that out. But the problem that that fragrance has to me, and it, it'll, it'll come up across a couple different Roja fragrances, is that there's a brand called Clive Christian. And Clive Christian is another very high-end brand. Uh, and if you look here, in 2000, and, and actually the year 2000, they made X, okay? So they made X for men. And X basically is a better version of Reckless Pour Homme. It came out 14 years before Reckless. I like the cinnamon more. Um, it seems to wear better on me. Like um, I appreciate uh, the fragrance more when I wear it versus Reckless Pour Homme. Reckless wears a little lighter and um, I just can't appreciate it for some reason. Maybe it's the Eau de Parfum. Maybe the Parfum version actually would have uh, given better longevity and all that stuff that I usually don't care about. It does have a beautiful woodiness about it, but um, it's not enough. You know, for me, it's uh, it's just a little bit of a disappointment. So Reckless Pour Homme Eau de Parfum comes in at number 25. Okay. Number 24. Uh, now, this is one that I have not done a video on yet either. And uh, this is called H, the exclusive Aoud Parfum, uh, which is discontinued, unfortunately. Uh, H, the exclusive Aoud Parfum came out in 2014, and it was marketed as unisex, okay? So it took a page out of... It took a page out of Interlude Man... Uh, by Amouage, uh, which came out a couple years before this, and it did this oregano opening, okay? Uh, and it did this oregano opening, and it dries down to this oud, uh, valerian, benzoin, birch, labdanum, nutmeg, patchouli, vetiver, cipriol, and guarjum balsam. And um, so it's oriental woody, um, somewhat smoky because of the birch, with that classy, you know, ro rosia, floral heart, geranium, jasmine from grass, and may rose. And I do like this fragrance. Uh, I enjoy it. I'll, I'll, before this little decant is done, I will talk about it on the channel. But um, it's not my favorite, so that's why it's here. Plus, it's discontinued and very hard to find. Those H, the exclusive fragrances are... Um, they're tough to find now that they've been discontinued. Uh, and then, this may shock some people, but you know what? I have to be honest. I have to put it here. Being honest is not just a bashing stuff. Um, it's also about standing up and saying you like something when everyone else talks shit about it or they hate it. And so at number 23, this is Roja's Apex. I'll do a full video on this one day, but the reason this is here is basically because this takes this vintage DNA, which I actually really like, and it fuses it 
like in this modern style, which I don't really like. You know, if I, I the the reason this isn't higher and the reason is it, it isn't lower is it kind of scratches an itch for me in a spot where I really it's almost like I didn't know I had an itch. You know what I mean? Like creating a fragrance that um, creating a fragrance that is vintage in style and yet feels like it's modern is not something I thought I ever would need because I would just prefer to wear the vintage fragrances. You guys know I love vintage perfumes. And so this takes that vintage style. Some people say it's a bit like Antaeus. Um, I've heard other older fragrance comparisons come out like Halston uh, Z14 or, you know, something from that era. And it makes it modern niche. And so... I appreciate the vintage style. Uh, I don't appreciate the modern niche as much, but I understand that's what I guess you have to do. And then it takes this pineapple note. And the pineapple is what really brings this down a couple notches for me, because if you're going to go vintage niche or vintage, go vintage. You're Roja. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to make this um, palatable for everybody. Make it the way you want to make it. I feel like the pineapple was like a cop-out. Like, oh, it's got a little bit of that Aventus pineapple vibe to it to bring in more of the bros to wear this. And, um, you know, it's... I, I do like it. I'll do a full video on it. I'll talk about it. This is the Eau de Parfum. They've now already issued a Parfum version, which is crazy to me. Uh, it hasn't even been seven months since this came out, eight months, and they've issued the Parfum version already. So it goes from 100 mil to 50 mil, and it doubles the price almost. Um, and I don't like that strategy at all. Now, I know I've been giving Roja a lot of flack for doing that because you're going to see a couple fragrances where I have the EDP. They discontinue the EDP where you could buy it for 260 and they make it in a parfum version, which you have to pay twice the price. Um, and they actually went the opposite direction on one. They had a release that was really kind of botched. They had a botched release called Manhattan. And Manhattan was a pure parfum. Uh, and it was supposed to be like a very limited amount, like, you know, 180 bottles or something they made or 250 bottles. And that's it for the whole world. And, um, it, for some reason, it didn't work out that way or something happened. It wasn't as exclusive as they said. They made more bottles. And I, I don't know the full story, but there was some controversy with it. And now they went the other way and they created Manhattan Eau de Parfum that's being launched very soon. And so that's the only time I can really think of where they did a Parfum first and then they did a Eau de Parfum outside of the Parfum Colognes, which I, for the most part, hate. I hate that entire line. Uh, whenever we get to one of the fragrances in the countdowns that I think has a good parfum cologne, I'll mention it. But um, until then, most of um, you're not going to see any of the parfum colognes in this list. Okay, next. Next on the list, we are going to H, the exclusive parfum pour homme from 2015. Also discontinued, unfortunately. And if I haven't done a video on this one yet, I will. I, I, don't rem I don't recall if I did a video or not. I don't think I did. Um, but HD Exclusive Parfum Pour Homme, or Pour Homme Parfum, is a good fragrance. I enjoy this. And uh, it's almost like, imagine you have like this fougere DNA, but with oud. Okay, it really feels like you have this oudy, very wearable, woody, fruity. Fruity because there's a beautiful plum note in here. And many people compare that plum note to plum Japanese, a, a discontinued Tom Ford. I've never smelled that fragrance. Unfortunately, I can't speak to it. But it is a beautiful plum note. If you like the plum in something like Rochas Femme, uh, I think you'll like the plum here. And it is a good perfume, but it's discontinued. Don't go spend $1,000 on a bottle. I'm telling you, it's not worth it. But uh, if you get a chance to give it a sniff on the cheap, do it. Okay, so that was number 22. So now we're going to go to number 21. And um, this is the first of this Oud line, this uh, regular 
traditional Oud line. Originally, he only put out three, and then all of the Arabic spinoffs for the, you know, different uh, countries and stuff like that came later. But we're going to start with number 21, and this is called Musk Oud. So Musk Oud uh, is a good fragrance that suffers from an issue. And that issue for me is longevity and being able to enjoy the fragrance on my skin. And you guys know, I usually do not complain about longevity, performance, sillage, none of that shit matters to me because I have so much juice, I usually just reapply. But when you spray a fragrance and, you know, it's literally within the first hour, it's basically gone or turned into a skin scent. For this kind of money, I have a problem with that. Uh, and the others from the line do not have this problem. Musk Oud just feels very light. It came out in 2013. It's a woody oriental. Uh, and many of this line, the original line, has heavy florals. People don't realize that, but florals play a huge part in the original Oud line. Uh, especially the rose. So there's this big May rose with Oud and birch and ambrette and leather. And it's the ambrette that he's used as musk because ambrette is a material that is comes from a plant grown commonly in India. Uh, I did an entire video on ambrette. You can go check that out if you'd like. It's under my This Is Not A Top 10. Um, and while it does have a nice sandalwoody, vanilla-like dry down, um, it, it just, it feels like for the first hour, maybe for the first two hours, I can enjoy it. And then it's like, I'm searching for it. I'm like, where the hell did it go? And so for me, this is the weakest of the three ouds we're about to talk about. Original ouds that he put out. Uh, but it's so pleasant in the first hour. It's so nice in the first hour that I had to put it here. I couldn't put it any lower. Although it almost got beat out by H the exclusive Parfum Pour Homme, but in the end, Musk Oud barely prevailed. Okay, so next on the list, we're going to go to number 20. And this is here mostly because it's a chifra, and I love chifras. It's a floral-heavy chifra, though, uh, but it's so beautifully done. The florals here are so decadent, so well done. I have to put it, I could not put it any lower. Uh, this is called Chifra Extraordinaire at number 20. Okay, so, Chifra Extraordinaire um, suffers from a problem in the Chifra line that Roja has, and that's that Roja has one of my favorite Chifras of all time. You're going to see it very close to the top of the list. Um, and it's a spicy, animalic, somewhat challenging Chifra, lots of moving parts. And while this is much more clean... Chifra Extraordinaire has this, you know, cl clean aldehydic floral about it. And that clean aldehydic floral, if you can, if you like your Chifras to be clean, if you don't like the dirtiness, if when I talk about things like civet, cumin, castorium, hyrax, you know, uh, animalic honey or whatever it may be, if stuff like that puts you off, this is really your fragrance. And even though it says there's cumin in here, even though it says there's civet in here, do not let that put you off. To me, this is a very clean floral chifra. And, but it is very well done. It's very, um, you know, if you like wearing the old school chifras from the past, um, if you like uh, some of the vintage chifras that are, you know, clean, floral heavy, Check this one out. I think this would smell amazing on a on a woman who wears a you know uh, who wears you know like a pantsuit with a proper jacket to work, and um, you know she's the CEO, she's the boss of her company. You know this for a woman in a position of power, this would smell absolutely stunning on them. Uh, I still wear it too and love it, but the reason it's number twenty is Roja has other chifras that cater more to my taste for someone who loves animalics. But it is very good. Would I buy a full bottle? Absolutely not. No. Uh, would I wear it if someone gave me a bottle? Sure. But it wouldn't be something I would reach for very often. Okay, number 19. 
Uh, number 19 is going to be the regular Aoud. Or regular Oud. I always say that because of the way Roja writes it, but I guess you're just supposed to say Oud. The dark blood looking juice. And Roja's Oud, this is the original one from uh, 2011. Woody Oriental. Huge rose and geranium combo with a little bit of jasmine and elang uh, and that oud with leathery notes. Uh, there's a there's a fruity rhubarb in the dry down and what they claim to be real ambergris. Some people compare this to oud satin mood. I've never smelled oud satin mood, so I can't speak to that. But it does have this sweetness to it. Uh, I like it, but it's more like instead of an oud and rose, it's more like a rose and oud, if that makes sense. It's lots of rose with just a little bit of that oud feel. So, um, yes, it's good. I have this decant. I also have another little sample in here somewhere. Uh, so, you know, before they are gone, I will do a video on it, but um, you will not see a full bottle of this in my collection anytime soon. All right, so that was at number 19. Number 18 is a discontinued Middle Eastern heavy fragrance, and it's called Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Okay, so Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh, what is it? Well, it's basically a fruity shifra, is the way that I would describe it. Um, and it's a fruity shifra because uh, it has that shifra construction, that DNA. It's almost like an oriental shifra with a lot of fruit is the way that I would describe it because it kind of has um, aspects of both. Maybe it might even lean more towards an oriental because of that vanilla in the base. But I mean, look at the uh, look at the fruits on this fragrance. You get apple, black currant, strawberry, raspberry, plum, banana a lot of fruits. Uh, why are there a bunch of fruits for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia? I have no clue. If anyone knows, let me know. Um, but it opens up with this aldehydic citrus green artemisia, and then it just dives into the florals, the fruits. Beautiful on a warm day. I think uh, the heat really brings this fragrance out beautifully. Um, he has used some sweeter notes in the base. And so uh, this is a very approachable fragrance. It's got things like uh, cotton candy and cacao in the dry down, um, saffron and clove and violet leaf. There's a lot going on, but um, it's, uh, it's, it's good. I'm glad I have this. I will do a video on it, but you will not be seeing a full bottle in my collection anytime soon, uh, especially with it being discontinued and prices going through the roof. Okay. So let's go to my favorite uh, version of the just normal Aude Original 3 release. And so we're coming in at number 17, and this is Amber Aude. So I didn't include this in my Amber video. I easily could have. I also could have include, included Costume National Soul, which I forgot. Uh, so these two you could have added to that Amber list that I did. You can't remember everything, right? Um, but Amber Aoud Parfum uh, uses an interesting note of fig in the heart. And he uses that fig accord later in a fragrance that I appreciate much more than this one. Uh, and But as far as... I, did a, I actually did a video on this. You can watch it. And um, it was one of the days that me and my daughter... Uh, who was two at the time, went to a father-daughter dance together. And um, so I'm kind of all dressed up, and I wore this, and, and it really worked beautifully. It's a fantastic oriental woody fragrance with this amber. The, the dry down, while there is ambery touches, uh, it feels almost more like it's ambergris, like it's ambergris is what you're getting. Um, but it's but go watch my video. It'll give you more insight into it. I enjoyed it. I this is a this is a fragrance that I would not mind a full bottle of, but there's no way I'm paying 600 bucks for Amber Oud Parfum. Okay, so next on the list is number 16. Number 16 is the fragrance that we talked about yesterday. Uh, this portrait of a lady, you know, style Roja fragrance. It's called 51. 
pour on parfum. Go check out my review from yesterday if you have not. And this is really good. I mean, it has a DNA that I really enjoy. Um, and that DNA that I really enjoy is this uh, rose with animalic notes. It has this, you know, um, this very polished rose is, is the way that I would describe it. Beautiful rose, a little bit jammy, not really fresh, not really animalic, um, kind of right, just perfect rose note. And with that Middle Eastern rosia-like dry down, if you will, right? So it has things like oud, birch, um, got some on my nose, leather, ambret, benzoin, cashmeran. Cash um, and this fragrance has a problem, though. It came out in 2015 in Eau de Parfum. They then discontinued it in 2017. They did the Parfum. They then discontinued that. Um, so both versions, the Eau de Parfum and the Parfum, are discontinued. The problem it has is that Portrait of a Lady is a better fragrance. And to my taste, as someone who likes animalics, uh, this is an even better fragrance. And that's Eugene's La Dale Exquise. I talked about this. If you're not familiar with Eugene's brand, um, check it out. He's a YouTuber who's been kind of doing this for... I don't know, seven years, eight years, whatever it is, but he founded his own brand and um, worked with Antoine Lee, the famous perfumer, and came up with this little beauty. And the reason this is better for me is because of the natural castorium in here. I don't know how they did it, no clue, but uh, it gives this orisey, saffrony, castorium uh, vibe. And the castorium in the dry down is one of the most beautiful castoriums I've ever smelled. You know, if you like something like Amouage Imitation Man, uh, La Dalle Squeeze will scratch your itch. And you get 100 mils for 260 or whatever it is. So you don't have to pay $1,000 a bottle on the gray market like, for, like you would have to do for 51 Pour Homme. So again, suffers from a very similar fate as some of the other roges we talked about. Like, oh, the exclusive Parfum. Uh, you know, which I'd rather just wear the moon, you know, so you're starting to get a trend. 51, poor home, I'd rather just wear the Dalle Squeeze. So, but it is a good scent. I mean, if I had it in my collection, I would wear it. I wouldn't buy it though. Okay, next is, is the first full bottle on the list and it's all the way up at number 15. And I don't have 15 full bottles, so you can see how far this one just fell uh, after I kind of had it, wore it, compared it, and it's this one. It is Roja's Vetiver Parom Parfum. So the reason this is coming in at number 15 is that I think it's a good vetiver. He did a similar trick with the citruses in the top, bergamot, lemon, uh, and then you get that, let's say, a Kubiba note that extends the citruses. Uh, you get this floral heart with a little bit of cystus labdanum. And you get these this dry down with celery seeds, which he used in La Oscar Porom, cedar needles. Um, there's some green galbanum. And, you know, what it feels like, though, is it feels like just a roja chifra with maybe a little bit of vetiver, maybe a little bit of green notes turned up a bit. Uh, but to be honest, uh, if I'm going to wear a vetiver in this style, which this is a little darker than the Parfum Cologne. I really did not like the Parfum Cologne when it came to the vetiver. Um, I like this one more because of the fact that it's a little bit darker and I do like my vetivers dark. Like I would honestly, I'd rather wear Ancre Noir over this, but if I'm going to wear a fresher vetiver, honestly, the problem that uh, Roja's vetiver has is that Guerlain's vetiver which, you know, is basically the house Roja wishes it could be, blows it out of the water. I mean, this with the tobacco, um, this is one of the greatest masculines of all time. Every, I mean, I have a hard time wearing this. It's not my favorite Guerlain to wear, but uh, man, when I wear it and when it fits, especially in the heat, I love wearing this in the heat because that green grassy vetiver really comes through. It just, you know, Roja's vetiver, while you may be wearing something that's $500 for 50 mil, I feel like this is a better fragrance. You know what I mean? So that's my issue with Roja's Vetiver right now. Do I like it? Yes. Will I wear it? 
Yes, would I buy it again? Hell no. No, this is probably my most regretted Roja purchase. Okay, next, number 14. Uh, we are going to go to a fragrance that I did a full review on, and you can go check it out. I wore it in some very special occasions where everyone was wearing suits. We were all dressed up to the nines. You know, we were uh, in a different state amongst people who were important people in the organization that I work for, and it did work beautifully. Now, I don't think that the name does it justice, but it's called Majestic Oud Parfum which is discontinued. This only came out in 2018. It's already discontinued. And if you listen to the way Roja describes this, he describes this as a full-on oud, like when you walk into a palace and they're burning the finest oud oils. Um, this is what you smell. And I completely disagree. I don't think this smells anything like the finest ouds that I've smelled. Uh, and I have smelled some ouds from Ensar. Uh, you know, I've done three interviews now with Russian Adam. Uh, he sent me some of the real oud oils, not just the perfumes, but the actual oils themselves. I did a 50 ingredient video list where we went through each ingredient he sent me. Some of those were the different types of ouds, plantation ouds, wild ouds, you know, all of this stuff. And, uh, this smells nothing like any of those at all. This smells like what someone who doesn't know what oud would smell like would think oud smells like. But that being said, outside of all that, if you can put that bias aside, okay, is it a good fragrance? Yes, absolutely, it's a, it's a good fragrance. I enjoy it, it smells posh, but the, um, look at the color of the, of the juice. It has this heavy osmanthus note, and I think osmanthus is, one of the main players here with saffron, uh, osmanthus saffron combo is kind of what you get here with ambrette, oud, castorium, civet. It's more of the castorium civet. It's like smelling a animalic floral uh, is what it is, but it's very well done. And uh, I enjoy this. If I could have a full bottle of this and trade my vetiver, I would. Uh, but... Um, at least I have enough to wear, enjoy. You know, I've got a, I've got a different decant. I have multiple decants of this. I have three decants of this actually, so I have enough juice to keep wearing it and enjoying it. But go check out my full review uh, on Majestic Oud Parfum if you're interested. But again, do not pay. I saw a bottle of this for like five grand on eBay. Do not pay five grand for this, I'm, unless you're just so loaded that five grand for you is like buying a cheeseburger from me. Don't do don't do it. Don't don't do it. You'll regret it. Okay, next on the list is uh, the very first from the Parfums de la Nuit series, and it is Parfum de la Nuit number two. All right, so PDLN number two makes the list at number 13, and you know what? This is a good perfume. I really like this line. I think this is a good line. Um, this particular one, 2015, it came out, Woody Spicy. It focuses on the note of cystus labdanum with cypriol, patchouli, rum, and balsam. So it's like tolu balsam, vetiver, uh, sorry, vanilla, uh, labdanum, cacao, tonka. And Roja has a better liqueur note fragrance than this. To me, uh, this is good. And, you know, for rum, though, there's so many other fragrances I would rather wear. Idole de Luban in Eau de Toilette, I think has a beautiful rum note. I enjoy that just as much. Why should I spend $1,300 on 100 mils of this? So this is this is why it's just a little bit lower than some of the others from the line. Uh, but it is good. I do enjoy it. I like this DNA. It's a little too sweet. I wish some of that vanilla was turned down a bit. But uh, I do like a boozy fragrance, and the rum here is good. It's just not, um, you know the the correct liqueur note which we will get to later on there's he's uh he's got a, a fragrance with one of the best liqueur notes in the game i think and that'll come in the top five okay next we're going to number 12 and number 12 is another full bottle and it's the only vintage paper label bottle of roja that i own it's called roja's scandal porom 
And um, here's the packaging. They used to come like this. This is what Roja's bottles used to look like back in the day with the just generic no Swarovski crystals, paper label. Um, I still like the presentation. I like the writing on the side. Um, I, there's nothing wrong with this bottle at all. And Scandal Parome and Eau de Parfum is my favorite version of this scent. I like it better than the Parfum Cologne by far, and I like it better than the Parfum. I've tried all three. This is the one I prefer. This is why I have a bottle of this. And um, it's a spicy fougere. You know, if you like things like Chanel's Pour Monsieur, YSL Pour Homme, um, you know, those kind of citrusy, if you like Tiffany for men, um, this could be a scent that would be right up your alley. And it's a very well done classical scent. It's got this uh, lovely lavender spearmint freshness to it. Um, and it's very posh, very classical and very posh. Um, and so I really like this. It's not going to blow anyone's socks off. You know, it's not going to win Fougere of the Year or anything. But um, it is, you know, it takes that that old school Fougere. You know, if you like something like Fougere Royale, uh, if you like those classic Fougeres, Duc de Vervins, uh, if you like those old style Fougeres, but you want it modernized with the Roja DNA, this is the one to go for. But go for the Eau de Parfum. If you can find a bottle like this, I would say go for it. Um, for some reason, the Eau de Parfum just has something, you know, the ambergris in the base really stands out on this. I never got the ambergris in the other versions. But it's very classical. This is probably one of the more mature scents along with like Herod's Pour Homme. Okay, so we're getting close to the top 10. Next um, is going to be number 11, another full bottle. And it's going to be this and another discontinued fragrance, by the way. This is discontinued in this formulation. They've since offered it in the Pure Parfum that came out this year, which is double the price almost, insanity, uh, when this worked perfectly fine. But uh, this is Roja's Oligarch Eau de Parfum. And this is the reason I don't own Terre de Hermes Eau de Toilette, basically. This is it. This is the reason why I don't own that. And because this has that Terre de Hermes DNA, but with this Roja poshness about it, it's uh, also a fruity, citrusy, floral chiffre. Uh, it's very complex. It has notes of uh, lavender, thyme, bergamot, lemon, lime, orange blossom, jasmine from grass, coconut. There is a real coconut note in here. Lily, champaca flower, black currant, apple, grass, mate, galbanum, pink pepper, anise, patchouli, oak moss, cedarwood, juniper, vanilla, tonka, amber, iris, birch, leather, ambergris, and musk. So, um, basically, what it dries to is it dries to having this Roja DNA with this Terre de Hermes vibe. And you notice there's no vetiver. Vetiver is a huge part of Terre de Hermes. Uh, there's no vetiver listed here, but I think there probably is vetiver, even though it's not listed. Uh, or it has the feeling of vetiver in the dry down. It's very good, uh, especially in the summer. You know, this and Kingdom of Saudi Arabia are two fragrance, two roses I love wearing in the summer because they're so posh. You know, they smell so, um, they smell so expensive. I mean, you really do smell, you'll smell like you made an effort wearing Oligarch. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's great, but for $500, for $250 for 50 mil, I could say okay. But for $500, now that you have to buy the Parfum, no, don't. Just get Terre de Hermes Eau de Toilette. Okay, next. Next, we are going to hit the top 10. So number 10 is a decan. It's not a full bottle. Um, and this is full bottle worthy. It's probably my favorite from all of the department stores that they've done. And you notice we've talked about a bunch of different department stores. We talked about Harrods. We talked about Goodman's, Bergdorf Goodman. We talked about the hotel chain, La Oscar. Um, I think Oceania was like a Selfridges exclusive or something. So he's done a bunch. This is uh, for Fortnum and Mason. Another department store, Fortnum 
and Mason. It's titled FM The Perfume in, um, in Parfumo, if you want to look it up. So we're in the top 10. This is number 10. And the reason that this is number 10 is this is also a fruity floral chiffre, but, but there is something about this that makes it stand one step above for me. Um, just the way that everything is blended, there's this unique note of citron note in the top. And citron note, uh, citron fruit, I feel should be used much more. It's used in stuff like Emoage Imitation Man, which is right over my shoulder. You can't see it. But um, it, it adds this distinctness, which uh, I wish they used more. And then it dries into this lovely floral resinous. Uh, there's both lab cystus labdanum and saffron and this fruity peach. And when you take the labdanum with the frankincense, the smoky birch, the woods, the vetiver, the oak moss, and it does feel like there's oak moss in here, although I'm sure it's probably that, whatever that alternative is that they're using, um, and animalic castorium, and it's that animalic castorium in the dry down that changes everything for me and puts this one step above something like oligarch and many steps above kingdom of Saudi Arabia. This is one that I think they really hit a home run on, and I think if this was titled anything else in just the normal collection, where more people could smell it, I think that this would be a hit. I really think this would be a hit. This is, and this is completely unisex. This would smell amazing on a woman. It would smell amazing on a man. Uh, so, so yes, uh, Fortnum and Mason, the perfume comes in at number 10. That might shock some people, but I mean, that could even be higher. It's amazing. And then, number nine, um, if I had to buy a full bottle of any of the Rojas that I don't own, uh, it would be this or Fortnum & Mason, the Parfum, or the one coming up after this. So these next three were hitting potential full bottles I don't own that I would love to own. This is uh, Parfum de la Nuit number one. So this is number one. Parfum de la Nuit number one comes in at number nine. And um, basically what it is, is it's this resinous, spicy, ambery Styrax, this waxy, vanillic-like Styrax in the base with civet. And it's that same cystus labdanum that you get over and over again, this time with spicy clove and saffron and cypriol. But that animalic civet mixed with the vanilla gives it this beautiful, spicy, ambery feel. Um, tolu balsam, tonka, benzoin, you know, it's that warmth. Um, some people compare this to Anique Goutal's Ombre Fetiche. I've never smelled Ombre Fetiche, so I can't speak to it. I would love to one day, but I never have. Um, but yes, it is uh, it is beautiful. Would I love a bottle? Sure. Am I going to pay them $1,300? Hell no. Absolutely not. Maybe if I can find it discounted 30 or 40% of its value, I would buy it. Not 30 or 40% off. 30 or 40% of what they're selling it for. And I might pull the trigger. Um, that's more of a fair price to me. But PDLN number one comes in at number nine. All right, number eight. Number eight is, uh, I think, the the final decant, everything else is full bottles after this, and it's the final one that I would love to own a bottle of that I don't. Again, just not paying the prices. This is uh, Sultanate of Oman. One of the best incense fragrances that I've ever smelled that I don't own. I love Sultanate of Oman, man. I, I love uh, the way that they created this fragrance because I think they've kept... So many elements from so many of these fragrances we've talked about intact. It has this raspberry you get from, oh, the exclusive Parfum. It has the floral heart we've talked about, May Rose, Jasmine from Grass Violet. Uh, but it dries into something that, even though it has many of the little pieces of the Middle Eastern base, it's got the frankincense, birch, oud, gayak, guarjum balsam, they've amped up the elemi and the papyrus and there's this iris and carrot seed which just make the dry down so i love what iris adds to a fragrance this you know 
um, powdery, rooty, earthy iris with carrot seed. And sometimes perfumers will use carrot seed as like a cheaper cop out. Um, so I was a little shocked to see carrot seed in something so expensive. But you know what? It works. I don't care. If you said, hey, you're smelling the most amazing iris in the world, I would believe you on this one because it's so good. One of the best frankincense fragrances that I've smelled that I don't own a full bottle of, but it's just the pricing. So I'll just enjoy this in the meantime and, you know, I'll wear a midnight stroll or whatever else in, you know, Andy Towers Incense Extreme in the meantime and just forego a full bottle of this. Uh, okay, so full bottles from here all the way out. Number seven. Number seven is this little bad boy right here. One of the newest Rosia additions to my collection in the beautiful La Corde Box Me Loyal. Look at this fingerprint magnet. Uh, and it is Parfum de la Nuit number three. Look at that presentation, though. I mean, I know I say presentation doesn't matter, but damn, that looks badass. Um... And so there you have it. Beautiful bottle, 100 mil. Parfum de la Nuit number three is, um, oh, I love this fragrance because it has this um, cumin, one of the best niche cumin fragrances I've ever smelled. And the cumin in this reminds me a little bit of Eau de Hermes. I'm the only one who I've ever heard say that. Maybe I'm completely out of my mind, but imagine you took this Eau de Hermes Cumin from Edmund Rudnitska's masterpiece, I think his masterpiece, his magnum opus from 1951, uh, is Eau de Hermes, my favorite, excuse me, Edmund Rudnitska, and you staple it onto a posh rosia, so you get the, uh, you get the rosia base, you know, again, it, it feels like a very similar fragrance with tweaks here and there, so you get the Cumin, and it is beautiful. It's stunning when it, you know, really feels like you're smelling an 80s style fragrance with a uh, Eau de Hermes cumin stapled on. And then you get that labdanum, the resins, the cypriol here is very prominent. Lots of cypriol, spices like cardamom mixed with the cumin, saffron, waxy styrax, um, this leathery labdanum. So the labdanum in the base here almost feels like you're smelling a leather dry down. And uh, Amiris, again, which is, Amiris is one of his secret ingredients, I think. And it's that um, genus of plants that comes from the citrus family that exudes elemi resins, right? And um, so I think this is the best in the line. Although number one is beginning to grow on me. I sprayed it again recently for the first time in a long time. I need to wear it again and decide if it's full bottle worthy for sure or not. Okay, so I'll dust I'll dust those fingerprints off soon, don't worry. Um, number, so that was number seven. Number six, just outside of the top five, is uh, one of my favorite cognac fragrances of all time. Uh, it's this, and it's Amouage's um overture man that compete with each other to me these are the two cognac fragrances that just go head to head for the two greatest cognac fragrances sometimes i think it's creation e pour on parfum i mean look at that juice color man oh i love wearing this stuff in winter it is and you know oh god that cherry that uh cherry pepsi opening man gets me every time i love this fragrance and I've heard some people say, but Ramsey, you don't like sweet fragrances, but when they're added with cognac and tobacco, I do. If you notice, there are certain notes where if you add some sweetness to it, I can, I can put up with it. Here, the sweetness of the vanilla is normally something I hate. I love it here. Uh, it's one of my favorite sweet fragrances, and it has this beautiful uh heliotrope you know there's no other way to describe heliotrope than just biting into um you know like when a dentist takes a mold of your teeth and you just bite down and it just creates that mold that that um that mattress like bounce uh is is the feel that heliotrope gives and it's one of the most important notes here no one talks about oh with tobacco i can't wait to wear this and um 
even though this is the Parfum, I have a decant of the Parfum Cologne, and I think that this Enigma Pour Homme or Creation E, depending on where you are in the world, because Enigma is like a copyright issue for them, they couldn't use it, um, is the best Parfum Cologne. I would skip all the other Parfum Colognes, but if you want to grab 100 mils, over 50 mils, the Parfum Cologne, it smells almost like you're smelling diet, Pepsi, cherry Pepsi, instead of the rich, full-bodied, you know, uh, just normal cherry Pepsi. Uh, when you smell the Parfum Cologne, I actually did a comparison video. If you go to my channel, you can watch that comparison video. Okay, top five. Here we go, top five. All right, so number five. Um, Number five is a fragrance that has grown on me. The more that I wear it, the more I love it. The more I think about it, the better I think it is. And I had no plans on buying this. I actually did a full review on it. Um, I've talked about it on the channel because I have a Discovery Atomizer as well. But then this bottle fell in my lap at a price that was like, you know, 33% of its, of its fair market value or less than that even, 30%. And I was like, God, I have to take this. I can't say no. And I'm glad I did because I wore it a month or so ago and I just loved it. I mean, it 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 really has grown on me. Um, it's this shape shifter. There's a huge Ylang Ylang note in here, which you would think I hate, but I love. Uh, and this vanilla ambergris civet Styrax. This, it's like this oriental meets chifra and it's just beautiful. It's... Um, Roja's Houtlux. Again, look at the presentation on that. Just a stunner. Um, and Houtlux has gold flakes in the bottle. Yes, it does. How crazy is that? What a waste. Uh, but it's not the first fragrance to have gold flakes. Believe it or not, uh, there is a fragrance from the 1980s called Laird Dor? Le, Le, Le Lair Door, I don't know. If anyone has information on this, let me know. But I got this from Anuj at Enchante. And look, gold flakes from the 80s. So Roja uh, is not the first. He takes many things from history. But um, is this a good fragrance? Yes. His selling point is when people say, Oh, Mr. Dove, Mr. Bird, are those gold flakes? And he can say, Why, yes, they are. But... The gold flakes cost less than the jasmine in here, and it costs less than the ambergris in here, and he's a salesman. He's a damn good salesman, too, but just smelling it even from the atomizer, I want to wear it. I mean, I want to wear this. I want to spray this right now. God. This easily could have been higher. The reason I didn't put it higher is um, I don't know why I didn't put it higher. But the reason I didn't put it higher is that I keep waffling back and forth on the top five. I mean, I struggled with this list. I struggle with all of these countdowns, but because I want to take it seriously. But man, this this could uh, be number one to number five any day of the week, anywhere in between. This top five is like, uh, depending on what day you catch me, uh, if you would have asked me to rank this uh, a year ago or two years ago, this would have been like number 20. This has come a long way. A long, long way. But go watch my full review. I think I was very fair to it. And I uh, stand by everything that I say. So Roja's Houtlux. Or just, it's actually just called Roja. Houtlux is the collection. Okay. Next. Next on the list. We've got number four. Which comes after number five, believe it or not. And it is this little bad boy. Come here. There you go. Uh, and this is heavily inspired by Guerlain's Heritage, my favorite masculine Guerlain of all time. Okay. And this is called Danger Pour Homme Parfum. Uh, Oh man, I just love this DNA. That's that's my personal preference shining through here because this is like taking heritage and adding more cumin and adding a little bit of ambergris and civet and making it a little bit more animalic. And 
I just love this DNA. I mean, I, I can't get over the DNA. Uh, if you've never smelled Heritage and you smell this, you'll think you're smelling the greatest masculine of all time. You'll think Roja Dove is a genius. And um, obviously, if you knew that he was using Heritage as a platform, or some people would say as a clone, he was cloning Heritage and charging 500 bucks for 50 mil, uh, you wouldn't think he was as smart, but then there, here I am. I bought a bottle with my own hard-earned money. He didn't send these to me like some fragrance reviewers because um, I'm not always kind to his scents, as you can tell. And so, yes, I um, I love this scent. This easily could be number one, could be number five. Anywhere in between the top five is, you know, transitory. And uh, But, man, if you love Guerlain Heritage and you want to see the next step, you want to see a niche version of Heritage, Danger, Pour Own Parfum. Okay, number three. We're getting to the real big boys here. Number three is this little bad boy right here. And again, if you know Bellamy, uh, and if you, if you know this fragrance too, by the way, Pure Distance M. Roja is listed as the, parf of the, as the perfumer here. Uh, and so this is Fetiche Pour Homme Parfum. This is a uh, leathery, spicy. He uses that fig note that popped up in a fragrance we just talked about. Uh, where was the fig note? It must have been in... I'd have to go back and, and check where the fig note was, but there was a fig note that popped up in um, Amber Aoud. Amber Oud is where he used the fig. Also from 2012. This is from 2012. But uh, if you are a fan of Bellamy or Pure Distance M, Fetiche is kind of like a more... LME, frankincense, smoky, heavy version of that. Uh, I love Bellamy. It's my favorite fragrance. I did a top 100. Bellamy came very, very close to the top. Uh, go watch my top 100 if you haven't, and you'll see just how close to the top it came. And so, you know, because of that love, this has to be here. You know, I easily could have put Roja's Houtlux here and this number five and, and mixed it up. But um, this has to be here based on my love of leather and how much I enjoy this style. This style to me, every time I wear it, I just feel like I'm really wearing something that really fits my personality, who I am. Uh, it's, it's like it was made for me. I love, I love these three fragrances. Bellamy, Fetiche Pour Homme, and Pure Distance M. They're all in that same category. And then, top two. Can you guys guess what's what? Uh, number two. Number two is uh, a Russian leather, which I just did a... Whoops, that's not it. I just did a video of my Russian leathers. Wait a minute, that was it. I just did a video of my of my uh, Spanish leathers versus Russian leathers versus modern suede-like leathers. And um, so this would fall directly into the Russian la leather category. And this is Great Britain. Again, how about that? How about that presentation? Beautiful. Uh, Great Britain is a Russian leather from 2015, uh, think Queer de Russie, think Queer Canage, think Tabac Blonde, you know, those kind of fragrances. Um, man, it's, it's a stunner. I mean, if you're a leather fan like I am, these last two, Fetiche Pour Homme and this, are, are two very close to the, some of the best leathers that money is going to buy as far as modern niche leathers go. Now, the best leathers money can buy are going to be the old vintages, but um, we're talking about modern niche. You're not going to do much better than these two. And finally, the number one perfume for me by the House of Roja Dove 
is Diagolev. I can't stress how much Diagolev means to me. Uh, it's a fragrance that just completely changed my view of fragrance. I mean, it's in my top 10 for a reason. Um, yes, this is based on Mitsuko, but it's different. Yes, it's got a little bit of Rochas Femme in there, but it's different. Yes, it has a little bit of this Azure by Estee Lauder, this Bandi. I mean, even just smelling it right now, the animalics are just pushing its way out. The cumin, the animalics in here, it's so it's such a challenging big Baroque chiffre, as as Roja Dove says. Oh man, this is. And the fact that this is all the juice I have makes me a little sad. I need to find another bottle of Diaghilev, but um, I'm a little worried the new stuff isn't as good, but who knows? Um, all I know is I absolutely love this stuff. I think it is, um, I think it's a masterpiece, uh, and I don't use that word very easily. Uh, the way that the base comes together with the civet, ambergris, cumin, and this is like a 20 hour fragrance. I mean, the dry down is extremely long, extremely complex, floral heart. Um, I don't care. Uh, uh, you know, I don't care if, if you smell this and you're offended by the dirty sexual tension in this because when I wear Diaghilev, I wear it for me. You know, I enjoy the way it develops. I enjoy the animalics. You know, you might have a hard time wearing this at work or something, but honestly, I wear it anywhere. I wear this anywhere, anytime. Even just smelling it from the atomizer, like, changes my brain waves. It's just... And so now you see my dichotomy, my, you know, I have this Dr. Jekyll and, and Mr. Hyde uh, split with the House of Rosia because how can you create stuff like this that I love so much and yet some of what he creates and the price tag and the things that he stands for, you know, discontinuing the EDP to issue an extra and double the price and really is everything I stand against. So the House of Roja is a very tough one for me, um, especially since all of these I purchased with my own money. These were not sent to me for gifts like some like most reviewers that you see. These are my personal opinions that actually mean something. Anytime you see a, a reviewer buy a fragrance with their own hard-earned money, you know that they love that fragrance. And you can see I have a lot of Rojas to discuss. Uh, it's obviously a house that has intrigued me enough to sample many of their releases. Um, I would love to smell the stuff I've never smelled, like Manhattan or whatever it is. But, um, I mean, the path that they're going is a path that I don't know if I can follow. You know, I think maybe their best days are behind them, kind of like Creed. Creed's another one I'm going to do a family portrait countdown and um, so, so yes, I hope you appreciate this. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know what your favorite Rojas are in the comments. I love seeing your faces in the comments. I love the interaction. I love the people who, you know, um, leave comments and leave their thoughts because I read and respond to every single comment, or I, I try to. Um, and so uh, thanks to everyone who supported me so far. We did just pass 2,000 subscribers, which is crazy to me, uh, but I think the subscriber speed is really starting to pick up now. Uh, but, I mean, I have some of the best, most knowledgeable subs in the industry. So I, I really appreciate everyone's support. And thanks for watching and cheers. And I'll see you tonight with another video. Bye, guys.